Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation story, shine on every land. Thank you for joining us here at St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church for the Holden Evening Prayer Service, which is based on a devotional service that musician Marty Haugen composed more than 30 years ago at Holden Village, a Lutheran retreat center in the state of Washington. I greet you with the watchword for the months of August that can be found in 2 Kings chapter 19, where King Hezekiah prayed, Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. We begin the service in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, Make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way. Loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. I 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our life. Amen. A reading from Psalm chapter 9. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. And the reading from Second Kings chapter 19. King Hezekiah prayed, Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Our faith is regularly put to the test. Times of distress, it seems, teach us to pray. And we've certainly had our times of distress. This pandemic still bugs us. Then there were several natural disasters, more recently the searching heat, wildfires, and the flood in my native Germany that caused even more destruction and caused, caused many people their lives. How does one pray under these circumstances? What do you pray for? Or why pray at all if we can assume that God is omniscient, all-knowing, and therefore already knows about all the things that are coming our way? The verse from 2 Kings chapter 19 can teach us how King Hezekiah, who lived around 700 BC at the time of the prophet Isaiah, how he once prayed when the Assyrian king Sennacherib and his army were approaching Jerusalem with the intent to annex and destroy the land. Sennacherib sent messengers to King Hezekiah. He was boasting about their strength and that Israel would suffer the same cruel treatment that other nations had received before them. He mocked the Lord God, saying that their gods were stronger and that there was nothing in the power of the God of Israel that could spare them the promised destruction. You could say that this was the Nahreb's way of telling King Hezekiah, pray all you want, it won't work. But this is what the king did anyway. In that moment of national distress, Hezekiah prayed to the Lord with simple but honest words, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. He described what the Assyrians were doing to their enemies. Still, he was confident that God, the God of Israel, was stronger than their gods, who were mere idols, the work of men's hands, wood, and stone. He put his trust in the Lord, 
that he could save them from their enemy's hand. As I see it, we can learn a few things from Hezekiah's prayer in that he, first of all, surrendered to the Lord. Although he was hoping for a specific outcome, freedom from the Assyrians, he left the workings to God. Nor did he pray in such a way, as it happens quite often with our own prayers, that he thought that his prayer might solve the problem, that he could manipulate the Lord with words so that things could turn out the way he wanted them to be. Even though God in his omniscience already knows what's on our mind or what might weigh down our hearts, he still wants to hear from us. God still wants to hear from us out of our mouth what we have got to say to him. We can compare that to parents who already know what their children want to tell them, but in their wisdom they do not tell the story in their children's stead. Rather, they let their children tell the stories themselves because they want to hear it from them directly. Hezekiah also teaches us about humbleness, that we can pray in such a manner that we know that God is with us no matter the circumstances, no matter what might happen to us. Sennacherib sent a message to King Hezekiah that prayer in light of this likely destruction was futile, that prayer wouldn't save them or his people. God, good thing that Hezekiah did not listen to this hostile ruler, good thing that he decided to pray in this time of distress anyway. In the end, there was a turn of events, and Sennacherib had to retreat and return home to Assyria, it was, as it was prophesied, foretold by the prophet Isaiah. It doesn't mean that adverse circumstances will turn out fine all the time. That's surely not the case. We know that. After all, we do not control God. Rather, we can be assured that God holds us in his loving hands so that even when things turn out differently than hoped for, we can still pray that God may give us the strength that we need to go through tumultuous times. Even in desperate situations, we can trust the Lord. It's good to know that we can talk to the Lord about the things that have us concerned. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was... said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Until we meet again, and God willing, go in peace and serve the Lord. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. 
May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide.